Developing Evaluation Instruments to Improve Your Instructional Design, Part 1, Surveys and Questionnaires. Aloha, I'm Dr. Katherine P. Fulford, Professor of Learning Design and Technology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I'd like to provide a special thanks to all those faculty who contributed content. This is a five-part video series, starting with Part 1, Surveys and Questionnaires. In this video series, we'll be talking about data collection methods, such as surveys and questionnaires, pre-embedded and post-test, interview or focus group protocols, field notes or observation forms, and usability protocols. Surveys and questionnaires. Please note, I will use the term surveys for this video to save time. Surveys and questionnaires are often used interchangeably, but they're actually different things. Survey, for example, is a descriptive research technique or methodology that includes questionnaires, interviews, and focus groups. Whereas the questionnaire itself refers to a paper and pencil or electronic instrument through which the information is obtained. Both of these are useful for surveying groups of any size, and are typically designed to determine opinions, attitudes, or present practices. The limitation, though, is we're relying on a person's self-reported information. There are some pros and cons to surveys. First of all, it's easy to collect information from many and dispersed groups. It provides standardized information. It allows for easy tabulation and can be anonymous. The cons, though, or that it can be biased, you can miss important information, response choices are predetermined by the author, and it requires literacy skills. Survey development. You need to define what you want to know and how you're going to use the information as you develop your survey. Identify specific objectives. For example, what do you want to know about? you need to identify factors related to those objectives. For example, with factors related to satisfaction with instruction, you might look at the instructional environment, the teacher-student relationships, the nature of instruction, content, etc. You want to make an exhaustive list of everything you want to measure related to a factor. For example, in teacher-student relationships, you might want to look at the communication of information, the feedback on performance, the opportunities for input, the care and concern, etc. There are many things that you may want to look at. First, make a long list and then shorten it to the ones that you want for your particular survey. You might ask yourself, how many questions do I need? Consider what objective each question measures. Three to five questions per objective is recommended. So how many questions? Find a balance long enough to obtain the necessary information, but short enough so the respondents won't lose interest. The goal is about 15 to 30 minutes max. If you have too many, people will get frustrated and quit and you'll lose your data. Your survey introduction. Be sure to start with a personalized cover letter or introduction. In this, you will explain your purpose, tell them how they were selected, explain how to complete, and return the survey, provide a realistic time for completion. You will also explain the confidentiality and anonymity and how their data will be protected. Be sure to identify the deadline for returning the survey. And don't forget to say thank you. Designing a survey. Remember your purpose and goals. What do you want to learn? How will you use the information? Don't reinvent the wheel. Borrow questions and items from other places. Check for copyright restrictions and get permission if needed. Survey format. It needs to be attractive and professional looking. Use simple instructions and make it as short as possible. It should also be uncluttered and broken into logical sections with a good flow. It should be uncomplicated and easy to follow. Common types of items. Demographic items are very important. They give you a lens through which to see your data. You can have checklist items, ranking items, 
scaled items like a Likert scale, semantic differential scales, and retrospective surveys. And open-ended items are also very important because they will tell you often why somebody answered the way that they did. For more information, do a web search on types of survey questions. Here are some examples. Demographic items provide relevant information about participants. It helps you make sense of your data by getting enough information about who they are, how they view the subject or experience they might have in the particular topic that you're surveying. Here's an example. What types of surveys have you conducted? Check all that apply. This is a checklist item as well as a demographic item. They can check none, questionnaires, interviews, focus groups, or write in something else. Here's a ranking item. Why do you want to learn about surveys? And they can rank those from one to five. Schoolwork, work projects, improve your resume or skills, personal projects, or other. Likert scales. These measure attitudes and opinions. It gives you a degree of agreement or disagreement. It's typically a five-point scale, although you might see them as a six-point scale with no neutral point or a seven-point scale to give more choice. Here's an example. I'm comfortable with creating surveys from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Semantic differential scales are kind of interesting. They measure attitudes. They're typically a seven-point scale. This is an example. I find the lesson on surveys, and you can say anywhere between useless and useful, boring and engaging, hard and easy. You notice in this case there is a neutral point. If you want to, you can take that neutral point out and make a six-point scale. Retrospective pre-post surveys are very interesting and they may be new to you. Rather than having a survey before an event and then after, you put both sets of questions after. For example, my confidence level in developing surveys before this instruction was between very low and very high, and after this instruction was also very low to very high. And you can see how much they grew. And this actually is what the retrospective does, because sometimes if they think they know something very well before the event, they may rate themselves higher than they actually will after they've been through the instruction. So this can be a very useful type of survey. Good questions. Use clear and simple language and no jargon. Be concise and specific. Make sure that items are relevant and possible to answer. You want to avoid biased terms. Avoid any kind of double negatives. Avoid double barrel items. That's two questions in one. Make sure to cover all of your objectives. Response options. Change the anchors based on your focus of each question. Reflect the concepts that you're trying to measure. Fit the options with the question wording. Get at the level of precision or intensity that you're trying to discover. Use undecided and don't know sparingly. Use the options consistently and make sure to cover your objectives. General survey tips. Ask yourself, is this question worth asking? Keep it short and simple. That old rule, KISS. Focus your response choices. For example, rate the quality of the module using poor, fair, good, very good, and excellent. Rather than the module was excellent using an agree to disagree Likert scale. Conducting a pilot survey. A trial run is very, very important. It will help you test for instruction and question clarity, questionnaire format, variance in responses, timing, and other things that are specific to your survey. You don't have to do this with very many people, perhaps from three to five, and at least one. Warning, bad questions equal bad data. The way a question is worded and the response options offered determine the nature and the quality of data received. Aloha and mahalo. Now it's time to watch our next video, Developing Evaluation Instruments to Improve Your Instructional Design. 
Part 2, Pre and Post Test. Search YouTube for Katherine Fulford for more videos on instructional design and visual design.